What is up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Yak Pack Outdoors. Uh, we are on a, a quest today, an adventure. So the weather yesterday, it was about uh, the true feel. If you, if you take everything into consideration, it was about 101 degrees at the peak heat level yesterday. It is currently 74 degrees as we're speaking right now. So we're gonna go out, me and Trey, Trey's here finally. We're gonna go out and see what these fish want to eat. We got top water, we got uh, lipless cranks, ch uh, ch yeah, chatter baits, spinner baits, swim baits. We got all kinds of stuff. So we're, we're just on a mission today. We're gonna go see if we can put a, I don't know, dude, I'm thinking like a 62 pound bag, give or take. Yeah. Best five, 62, I'm just kidding guys, that was a joke. But uh, yep, so we're gonna go, I'll, hey, also we're trying out trays. This is a Hero 6, okay? This is a microphone that's not hooked up to this GoPro. So we're gonna see how this works today. But with that being said, before this storm comes, Let's get to fishing. This water's flowing good right now. Okay, so like I was saying, the uh, the goal for today is to be able to figure out what these fish want after such a drastic change in weather. Okay, like I said, it was uh, so many tilapia here. There was a, or it was 101 degrees yesterday. Today, right now, is 74. And uh, I think the high today was only 76. So, let's just see if we can figure it out. It's kind of hard to like angle your cast. Like, where do you want to cast? Like, where do you think they're going to, what's going to be the optimal distance off the bank that you want to cast? It's hard to figure that out sometimes here. Dude, I seen a bass on the bank like his nose was touching the grass and he was like four, pound. four or five easy yeah. yeah i walked up on him and was like that's not a play though and then i looked at him i was like oh that's a bass water's super shallow up in here do what there we go baby there we go. There he is. There we go. All right, ladies and gents, the uh, the sixth sense, the dogma does it. One nothing right now. This is a it's a good sized fish. I mean, it ain't no trophy, but hey, first fish of the day. Fish the day. Yeah. Go have fun, dude. There he goes. So at the very beginning of this video, guys, when you saw me and Trey standing at that drain pipe, I just noticed this literally right before I caught that fish. Look at the hooks right here. Look at this. I smacked the concrete so hard with this bait, it absolutely just destroyed this hook. But like, when I say I smacked it, like... He smacked it. I smacked it, guys. That was completely like on me. I absolutely smacked it. The bait should have broke, but it stood up. Yeah. The bait that yeah absolutely this bait should have broken half like it should have broken a million pieces but but it didn't so here we go so as my good buddy tyler from tyler's real fishing says uh one is not enough but two is a pattern so if we can catch another one on this dogma we have successfully patterned these fish i don't know about how serious that is but We're gonna just keep covering water. That's what we're doing right now, guys. We don't really know what the fish want. You literally just like, just cover water. Get a search bait, cover water. Actually, in yesterday's video, uh, you guys will see it pop up on the screen on the on the right side. I talked about uh, search baits a little bit while I was at Bass Pro Shop, man, uh, and the, the key role that they play. So search baits are a must when you are looking for fish and a, a spook like this, topwater spook. Creates a lot of water displacement. It's got a lot of noise, a lot of action. It's got a really good side to side movement as you guys can see. And uh, this is a really, really good search bait as well. If you prefer to throw your top water as a search bait on an overcast day like this after a big storm, it's a good search bait to use. It's really loud. I like, I really, really like this bait. Really like it. Looks like Trey came down here this time. He was ready. Last time he came down here, uh, Ooh, last time Trey came down here, he didn't uh, grasp the uh, the concept of pond hopping. And uh, this time, I think he's ready. He's got his Lamborghini's on. We pond hop down here in South Florida, it's no joke. 
What is that? There's something V-ing right there, bro. Apalia. What are you using, Trey, right now? Jackhammer. Trey's got the Jackhammer Chatterbait. Also, I did a video on that. The uh, Jackhammer's a $20 Chatterbait, so. Did a uh, Jackhammer versus a regular Z-Man. For those that don't know, Z-Man does make Jackhammer. Uh, and I didn't know that until I was done with that video and had already posted it. And a lot of you guys in the comments were telling me. Uh, Evergreen and Jackhammer yeah. teamed up on it. Basically, it was a Z-Man versus Z-Man. Pretty cool to know, though. I didn't, it truly just didn't know it. I thought it was some like homemade brand. Bombcast, baby. You just lost it? Yep. Guess what, though? The water's shallow right there. You can get in the water and get it. Yeah. Dude, what color was it? Huh? What color? Yeah. It's going to be hard to see, but you can still, the water's shallow right there. It's sand, too. You can get in and get it. Dude, I, this one right here is the reason I hate braid. Really? I love braid. Stuff like that happens to me, but I mean, it, pr it probably is the braid's fault, but like I just love braid so much that I I won't stop using it for something like that. So let's see if we can well, get your I bait don't back. Have to use it. You have to use it. We're on a rescue mission now, guys. Let's see if we can get your bait back. So it was green pumpkin, you said? Yep. That thing might be gone, dude. We're looking for a green pumpkin lure. And green pumpkin water. And green pumpkin water. Like that's. Pink colored water. Yeah. Dude. Budge, what is that? A little bass? Yeah. as big as your dogma. He'll eat the dogma though. I've caught some like fish smaller than my shower blows before. I caught, did you see that little like, I caught like a five inch bass on the uh, bait sanity swim bait. Well, Brett, look, this is why you don't fish 75,000 pound braid. Dude, it is like dug down in there. Holy smokes. I'm determined to catch another one on this dogma. And then Trey's determined to get, to get his backlash out, which I think we will, but all right, there's gonna be one sitting in here. Right out of his mouth, dude. Right out of his mouth. I knew he was gonna be there too. Don't litter. Now we are back in commission. That was about you guys. To you guys, it seemed like I haven't worked. I haven't edited this video yet at the time of me saying this. But to you guys, that seemed like probably about a minute or two. But uh, that was actually about a 30-minute ordeal with Trey dealing with that backlash. That was a rough one. Big bass right there. Big fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, get it in there. Don't let it jump, Trey. That's a freaking monster. Come on. Oh, shower blows, baby. Oh, shower blows. That's four pounder. Oh my god, dude. I just jumped in the water for that thing. No, you don't need pliers. How you doing? We're gonna let this bad boy go. This Trey's fish you just caught, it's a good size one. Three and a half, four. Ready to go? Gone. Gone. Good fish. <laughs> There's some good ones in here. I think it just, your bait? Yeah, that's uh, usually about that time is when they come close to the bank and they start spawning. And uh, oh, mine's still out in the water. <laughs> like, yeah, usually around April, um, in March, April, that's when they start making their beds right here on the bank and spawning. So you come out here anytime between February and March and uh, you'll, you should be able to just look right off your back deck and see them sitting there. The only thing we could catch them on was the, it was the big white minnow. Okay. I tell you what, if I catch a catfish, I'll come knock on your door. Cause my wife don't like cooking fish. <laughs> Have a good day. All right. Trey's winning big fish so far. It's all right though. As long as we can get out here and get hooked up. 
<laughs> Dude, you're drag. <laughs> That's like 2016 Yak, TJ Yak Pack. My drag would always be extremely loose. That was terrible. Yeah, that was bad. That was a good catch, though. That was, uh, yeah, that was those people. Was, those people were cool, man. I was really expecting them to be like, Bitches. yeah, like, you can't fish here. You get out of that. Look at that gar. Hook up. There we go. There we go. It's been a tough day. Yeah, he ate it though, didn't he? He was, he was hungry. Yeah, boy. Good one. Plop. Ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it. We, uh, I would say, successfully patterned the fish today. Come out. We got two hits immediately on top water at the drain and chatterbait. Trey stuck with the chatterbait until he broke it off and then moved to the spook. Got it done. All right, guys, we are back now. And my goodness, let me tell you, it is, it's 74 degrees, but it's humid. It's like, ah, it's like sticky out here. But uh, Trey and I was able to actually go and pattern those fish. Uh, now, I was actually going to change to a, a lipless crankbait. But I changed my mind because I had got hit on that, that first bite that I got right there at the, at the drain. I got hit with on the, uh, the dogma, the spook, the six cent spook. And I got hit again. Uh, I didn't have it for whatever reason, guys. I'm new, getting used to a new GoPro. I didn't have my GoPro rolling. So I got hit twice. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm getting hit twice, then, then maybe, maybe we can capitalize on a top water bite. So let's just see if that's what they want. And it ended up being what they wanted uh, generally for the most part. Could I have thrown a lipless and probably caught some? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, thank you again for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And guys, I'm telling you, we are about less than two weeks away. We're less than two weeks away from iCast. And I cannot wait to get there and to share everything, all, like the whole iCast experience. I cannot wait to get there and share that with you guys. But anyways, thank you again for watching, guys. We'll catch y'all next time.